This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas in Fort Worth, Texas, and sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is, how that Jesus Christ died for our sins. According to the scripture, he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, which has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recover the sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised. The word is lively, in your heart, in your mouth. It's the word of faith, which I preach. You can mess with your mouth. The Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised you from the dead. You shall be saved or born again. But with a mouth, confession is made into salvation. With a heart, man is believing under righteousness. I think I inverted that. But you got the message. Amen. Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God and salvation. Everyone will believe it. It's a Jew verse and also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed by faith of faith. As it is written, the just to live by his faith. I want to welcome everyone receiving this broadcast on live stream, Roku, Apple TV, YouTube, other devices, and shortwave radio. On my left, co-host, Kathy Davidson. How are you? Doing well. Good. Am I right? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Brian Bonner. Here it is. From <laughs> California. Hey, man. You man. And what a blessing it is to have him with Water of Life Ministries. You see, First Corinthians 12 says, God has set the church as it hath pleased him. Amen. Amen. Well, it pleased God to bring Brian halfway across the United States Amen. to find him a seat. Amen. <laughs> Welcome, Praise Brian. God. All right. I tell you, folks, we're having a lot of fun. We are now ministering song, praise. It'll get into worship. First, you got to learn how to praise. You got to sing, and then you can worship. Amen. Thank God. It takes faith to do all. Thank God. And we're going to praise God. Put a little worship in it. There's some banks in it, and it's we are able to go up and take the country. Hallelujah. Let's go get it. Amen. We are able to go up and take the country to possess the land from Jordan to the sea. For oh, the giants met there, how we do hinder. Our God has given us a victory. We are able to go up and take the country to possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Oh, the giants met there, how we do our God has given us a victory. We are able to go up and take the country to possess the land from Jordan to the sea. 
Oh, the giants, maybe they're howling to him there. Our God is dead and that's a victory. We are able to go up and take the country. To protest the land from Jordan to the sea. Oh, the giants, maybe they're howling to him there. Our God is dead and that's a victory. We are able to go up and take the country. Possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Oh, the giants, maybe they are way to hinder. Our God is near and that's a big part of me. We are able to go up and land country. To possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Oh, the giants, maybe they are way to hinder. Our God is near and that's a big part of me. I will sing. I will dance. In the Lord my God, I will sing, I will dance, I will rejoice in the Lord my God, I will sing, I will dance, I will rejoice in the Lord my God, I will sing, I will dance, I will rejoice in the Lord my God, for singing is a pleasure to the Lord. For he inhabits the praises of his people. Dancing is a joy unto his heart. For I will sing, I will dance unto the Lord. I will sing, I will dance, I will rejoice in the Lord my God. I will sing, I will dance, I will rejoice in the Lord my God. I will sing, I will dance. In the Lord my God, I will sing, I will dance, I will rejoice in the Lord my God, I will sing, I will dance, I will rejoice in the Lord my God, I will sing, I will dance, I will rejoice in the Lord my God, for singing is a pleasure to the Lord. For he inhabits the praises of his people. Dancing is a joy unto his heart. For I will sing, I will dance unto the Lord. I will sing, I will dance. I will rejoice in the Lord my God. I will sing, I will dance. I will rejoice in the Lord my God. I will sing, I will dance. In the Lord my God, I will sing, I will dance, I will rejoice in the Lord my God. For singing is a pleasure to the Lord, for He inhabits the praises of His people. Dancing is a joy unto His heart, for I will sing, I will dance unto the Lord. I will sing, I will dance. I will rejoice in the Lord my God. I will sing, I will dance. I will rejoice in the Lord my God. I will sing, I will dance. I will rejoice in the Lord my God. I will sing, I will dance. I will rejoice in the Lord my God. I will sing. In the Lord my God, I will sing, I will dance, I will rejoice in the Lord my God. For singing is a pleasure to the Lord, for the inhabitants, the praises of His people. Dancing is a joy unto His heart, for I will sing, I will dance unto the Lord. I will sing, I will dance. I will rejoice in the Lord my God. I will sing, I will dance. I will rejoice in the Lord my God. I will sing, I will dance. I will rejoice in the Lord my God. I will sing, I will dance. I will rejoice in the Lord my God. The Lord reigneth. The Lord reigneth. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for the Lord our God, only mortal, reigneth in majesty. Oh, the Lord reigneth, the Lord reigneth, for 
Oh. 
And God said, nope, we're going to do something different. I love that. I do too. I do too. Right, All right. straight to heaven. You got it. Before I begin, I do want to say something to you young guys. I had, uh, back in the, oh, probably late 90s, my son John was sitting next to me in worship. And my son, you know, we'd come and I'd give it all I could. And it was like John was sitting there, you know, waiting to go home. And, and one day I looked over at him and it's the spirit of God. And I said, John, I said, if you would worship with us, if you would put your heart in this and you lift your hands up, God will deliver you from some of that rebellion you're yielding to. And, you know, he kind of looked at me, kind of rolled his eyes, but 
during worship, he put up his hands. I think they were about right here, you know, because he didn't want any of the other guys to see him because, you know, he wanted to be cool. So he put him up here. And, and I thought, thank God, thank God. And I kept worshiping. And the next thing I know, John is in his chair and he's doing this. Uh, 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 mm, uh. And I'm thinking, how did he get sick so fast? I mean, I didn't even remember what I said. And, and he's got it. And I said, John, are you all right? And he goes, ah, ah, ah. You know what? That rebellion came right out of him. Hallelujah. God cast that devil out of him. And I'm sitting there going, man, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> He'll do the same for you too. Now, if you will turn with me to, uh, I think it is, yes, Matthew I think we're going to go to Matthew 7. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Uh, nope, nope, that's not, yeah, that's right. I'm going to go to, let's see. Okay, sorry. God changed the message, that's right. John 1, I just had to make sure where it was. I had some scriptures written down earlier, and I've got to follow those. John 1, Amen. and I believe it's verse 20. Okay. I'm going to fire, fire up somebody tonight, and I hope it's more than one. But I'm, but... God wants to light a fire under you. And I'm going to begin in, let's see, it is verse 40. And it says, uh, this is when Jesus first walked by the seaside. And he said, or he was walking with John the Baptist. And he said, one of the two which heard John speak followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And he first findeth his own brother Simon. So Andrew goes and finds Simon. And he says unto him, we have found the Messiah that is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld Simon, he said unto him, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou should be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. If you look up that, it's actually a stone, which is a piece of a rock. All right? So let's go on. So Jesus immediately sees this fisherman, and Andrew brings him. And Jesus said, You're Simon. I'm going to call you Peter. I'm going to call you Cephas, a stone, a piece of a rock. It says, the next day following, Jesus would go into Galilee, find a Philip, and said, um, no, where is the rest of that? Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's where I want to go. I want to go to the next one. This is when he meets him. Now we're going to go to Luke 5. Amen. Please forgive me. I've never done it like this. Jesus, you're Amen. setting me out here in the middle of no place. All right. And uh, we're going to go to 5 verse 3. Amen. Now, this is Jesus. He's already met Peter. Right. And he's already said your name is Cephas. So Peter's already met Jesus. Now, chapter 5. We'll begin in verse 1. And it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's. Now, he's already met Simon. Yeah. And he said, and prayed him he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people out of the ship. Amen. Now, I want to bring this to your attention. I've heard since I was this high that poor Peter, the poor fisherman. Now, if you think back in that time, this man owned a boat with his family mm -hmm. and they had partners. I don't think the man was poor. Right. And they were fishermen Amen. back in these days. You know, food, good retail. Yeah. So I don't think he was poor. He right. may not have been ultra rich, but he wasn't poor. Now, he says, he entered into one of the ships, which is Simon's, prayed to me, would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down, taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. Amen. And Simon answered him and said, Master, we have toiled all night. See, he called him Master, so we already knew. Yeah. And he'd already been listening to him. Yeah. Right? This fisherman. Right. This fisherman. Mm -hmm. He's a fisherman. He's got a job. All right? And he said, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I'll let down the net. And went now, now think about yeah. this. Yeah. They didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to talk about that Savior. Right. This is a man that Peter met. Mm -hmm. and, and his brother Andrew saying, We found the Messiah. So now they're listening to this guy. And now this guy says, okay, put the boat out in the middle of the water again and let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their nets break. Mm -hmm. This fisherman. Yeah. All right. 
And they beckon unto their partners, which were in the other ship. Now, there's another ship. How poor can you be with two ships? And he said, and they said, come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, both the ships. So they began to sink. And look what this fisherman does. Look at this fisherman that Jesus called, talked to him, said, your name's going to change to Cephas, to Peter. He said, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. Amen. He couldn't believe all the fish. This man must be a man of God. This man has just performed a miracle in front of my eyes. He said he was astonished and all that were with him at the draw of fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the son of Zebedee, with their partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Simon, he's after Simon now. He said, fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And look what that fisherman does. Look what the fisherman does. He said, and when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook everything. They forsook it all and they followed Jesus. They weren't educated. They weren't high echelons. They weren't high society. They might not have been poor, but they weren't super rich. And they left everything, and they're going after Jesus. Go with me to Acts 4. You know the amazing thing about this? Peter takes Jesus to his house. What's the first thing Jesus does when he gets to his house? He heals Peter's mother-in-law. Woo! I bet that was one nice one for Peter, huh? The mother-in-law's healed. That's got to be one for him, right? He just moved up in mother-in-law's eyes, right? (laughs) Now, go to Acts 4. Because why? He left all. He left all. And he's following this man, Jesus. He left everything behind. And he's going to follow this man, Jesus. And Jesus said, Jesus said to him, your name's Peter. Your name's Cephas. That means a piece of a rock. And you know who the rock was? Christ. Right. The rock was Christ. The rock was Jesus. Now, I went to Acts 4. I think it's 13. Yeah, 13. Now, when the, they brought, this was after Jesus is raised from the dead. All right? Amen. I want you to hear what they say about Peter. This man that was just a fisherman. He was a fisherman. He had a job. He left it all. He left it all. You know, he followed Jesus. He walked with Jesus. You know, that man got to heal the sick. That fisherman. It was just a fisherman got to heal the sick. Got to heal the sick, got to cast out devils. It says right here, look what the, look what the, uh, the leaders of Israel say to him. It says, and now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unlearned yeah. and ignorant men. They called that fisherman unlearned and ignorant. Uh-huh. You know what that unlearned, he didn't go to the seminary. Come on. He didn't go to college. He didn't even get to high school. He was unlearned and ignorant in their eyes. Now, what did Jesus do with that ignorant, unlearned fisherman? He got to cast out devils. He got to heal the sick. He got to watch Jesus raise the dead. Why? Because he's getting ready to do the same thing. Thing. That's right. He got to follow Jesus. You Hallelujah. know what? Jesus goes on the, the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter gets to see, it hey, was it Moses and Elijah, Elijah show up to talk to Jesus. <laughs> and Peter, the unlearned and ignorant man, That's right. got to see God send these men down right. to talk to Peter or talk to Jesus. Yeah. He got to see Jesus change. Yes. That man that he walked with, Jesus, now is transfigured before him. And he's talking to Moses and Elijah. Mm. Just standing there talking to him. You know what? And he's unlearned and he's ignorant. Do you hear that? He's unlearned and ignorant. Hallelujah. There is an Italian movement we used to say about when you call somebody unlearned and ignorant. (laughs) And I'm not going to do it. So, now... Do you see what Jesus did to a fisherman? That's right. A fisherman. Now, go with me. I think it's Acts 2. Amen. Wow. No, nope, it's not Acts 2. 
Okay, Jesus, where is it? Where is it? Paul, it's where they walk by Peter. The shadow of Peter. Thank you, and it's... Thank you. I love having a walk in concordance. Okay, inasmuch <laughs> as they brought forth the sick into the streets, this is that unlearned and ignorant man. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the one that left his ship and followed Jesus. All right. The one that laid everything down, put bet the farm Come on. on Jesus. That's right. Walked with Jesus. Hey. And you know what? Jesus didn't drop him either. Mm -hmm. Jesus had that man. Yeah. Jesus changed that man. Hallelujah. Took a, took, made him into this kind of man. Hallelujah. It says, and there was, in so much as they brought forth the sick into the streets, Jesus is gone now. Mm -hmm. And what does that unlearned and ignorant man do? He said they laid them on their sick laid them on beds and couches in the streets that at least the shadow of that ignorant and unlearned <coughs> man might Hallelujah. pass by them. Mm -hmm. Might pass by them. Mm -hmm. You think you need a college education. Come on. Peter didn't go to college. Hallelujah. You think you need to go to seminary. You mm -hmm. obey God. That's right. Peter didn't go to seminary. What had he done? They said these unlearned and ignorant men had been with, with Jesus. Jesus. Had been with Jesus. Hallelujah. What Hallelujah. made him that way? He had been with Jesus. Hallelujah. And you know what the wonderful thing is? That man didn't die slaying at home dying slowly with cancer or any other disease. That man went out in a blaze of glory. Yeah. He yeah. went out in a yeah. blaze of glory. Glory. You know, Jesus stood up with Hallelujah. Stephen. I can imagine what he did when Peter came home. <laughs> can you imagine that Jesus. unlearned and ignorant man don't you ever let anybody tell you that you are unlearned and ignorant. Yes. If they do, you turn around and say, the apostle Peter was the same way. Mm -hmm. You got that? What made Peter what he was? He had been with, with the man. Hallelujah. He had been with Jesus. It is worth it. Yeah. It is worth it to leave it on the shore, to leave it all behind and oh, walk hey. with the man, Jesus. Mm. Walk with the man. Hallelujah. You know, for the position I'm in as a woman, I left it all behind. I had to leave it go. I let it all behind. I left my career. I left my, I left my home. I left my children. I left it all. And you know what? You know why I can minister this way? Because I've been with the man. Amen. I have been with Jesus. Glory. And you can too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory. If it is mine. It's yours. Uh, you couldn't leave it under 14 feet of concrete. <laughs> <laughs> what do well, well, you got to say? <laughs> Let it all go. Amen. Let it go. Whatever you're hanging on to. Amen. Let it go. If you don't let go of what you're hanging on to, Amen. you will not get to know Jesus. Amen. The only way you can know him is by keeping his word. He said, deny yourself. Take up your cross daily and follow him. And you know what? That's when you know that you know him. Because until you put all your trust in him, until you make that commitment to believe him above what you know and what you understand, you're not going to know him. You're going to know of him. You can study him and read him in the Bible. You can, you know, learn all the Beatitudes and the stories, but you won't know him. You won't know him. The only way you can preach like our sister has just preached is through knowing him. And let me tell you what. Knowing him like that means there was a few tears shed. Well, just help me out a little bit now. I know we're going to get a little deeper with it, but it takes a few tears. It takes some scary moments. It takes some time where you have to go above your fear and trust God beyond your understanding. But when you decide that that's how you're going to commit your life, that's when you'll get to know him. Hey, and it's not because he's holding back on you. 
He's not holding back on you. Amen. We hold back on him when we don't trust him. Keep his word. Obey him. Make the decision tonight or today, if you're watching on the internet. Make the decision to trust him. Just drop your net. Drop everything that you're doing and say, you know what? That's it. That's it. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to obey you. What do you want me to do? You know what? I'm not moving until you tell me. I'm not going to do anything until you tell me what to do. And you know what? You're more than able to keep me or go, keep me alive. You're more than able to take care of me. You're more than able to get me out of this trouble. You're more than able to hear me, heal me. You're more than able to deliver me. You're more than able. And yet I believe it. And I'm going to prove it right now by standing on your word. I'm not going to stand on what I know or what I understand. Amen. I'm going to stand on your word. And I'm going to put my trust in you with all of my heart. Once you do that, you'll know him. And he'll reveal himself to you. And you know what? Somebody else will know you know him too. Amen? You won't just know him all by yourself. He'll make sure somebody's watching you and sees that you know him too so that they might know him. Amen? He'll use you as a witness and a testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Lord, that's all I have to share. I just want to back that up a little bit because I know that's how I got to know him. I had to let a few things go. I had to decide to trust him with beyond what I knew, beyond what I understood, beyond how I felt, beyond how things looked, beyond what people said, what people think. You're going to have to let it go because as long as you got those things holding you back, you're not going to be able to know the risen Christ. Amen. Praise God. No, I'm going to hand it to you. Oh, <laughs> you know, Kathy D came to live with me in Plano in January 2009. And one day I said, let me take you up and show you where 121 Veterinary Hospital was on three acres of land. And one day, the highway department came through and they bought everything but about a quarter of an acre. And Kathy D loves to say, <laughs> well, Doyle, One twenty one is buried under fourteen feet of concrete. I say it this way. And to our right, Taurus, here is the original original location of one twenty one veterinary hospital under fourteen feet of concrete. <laughs> That's what God thought about it. Uh -oh. um, we assume that's the word of God. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of funny. She can be funny. And it's funny. Amen. But I've got to tell you about Peter. Yeah. I don't know if this is in the Bible or some preacher said this. That Peter wanted to build Every one of them, a tabernacle. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. the Moses oh, yeah. and Elijah. Uh, it says he didn't know what to say, so he yeah. blurted out that. Yeah. <laughs> Transfiguration. Now, is that yeah. true? That's, yeah, that's basically, yes. That's not preaching. No. no, no. Well, I, I have the, I don't use the right word, but yes. He, he did not, he was afraid, and he just started yeah. talking, <laughs> and he said, we'll build three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one Elijah. That's what I thought. Right. You see, I haven't been able to read the scripture for more than 10 years, except on the tablet you got me. Amen. And I haven't been able to read that since 13. But <laughs> I just think it's funny that Peter wanted everybody to have a tabernacle. What's funny is <laughs> then the Spirit of God landed on him in a cloud and he told oh. Peter to shut up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, he didn't say that, but he said, 
um, what do you say, behold my son, listen to him, or, or something like yeah. that? I can't yeah. remember the exact yeah. words. Yeah. 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 yeah, I am well, yeah. My Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's an honor to sit between these two. Do you know that? Why? Because two preachers and they can sing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. We'll take it with a grain of salt, don't yeah, we? Yeah. Acts 26. <laughs> Mother, open her eyes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Turn them from darkness to light. Thank you, Jesus. Turn them from the power of Satan to God. Yes, Lord. Forgive their sins. Minister to every one of them. Thank you, Father. The gift of the, the gift that is given to every sanctified person. Yes. The inheritance the inheritance and that is in the, my heart through the faith of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, open their eyes. Turn them in darkness to light. Turn them in the power of Satan to God. Amen. Minister, forgiveness. Turn them in their sin. Minister, their inheritance. Among the sanctified one. By the faith of Jesus Christ that's in my heart. Amen. Amen. Speak this and be saved. Hallelujah. Follow me. Jesus. 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 Thank you. And good night. Amen. I tell you, it took all the great. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.